More reasons not to fly American. A DePaul University musician was humiliated and kicked off an American Airlines flight despite abiding by guidelines on traveling with her instrument. When Jay Tang got round-trip plane tickets for his cellist wife, Jing Jing Hu, he also bought a seat for her $30,000 cello, even confirming with the AA rep that it was allowed. Hu had no trouble on the Chicago to Miami leg of her flight, but trouble started after she'd been verified and pre-boarded on the return flight home. A flight attendant informed her she had to get off because her cello was too big for the plane. Curiously, once she left, two people promptly came in and took her seats. By AA's own regulations, oversized instruments are allowed in the cabin with an additional seat purchase, as long as it's not over 165 pounds. At the gate, who was told the next flight was also too small? She had airport police call on her for not being understandable and told she had to pay first or business class tickets to get home. She was eventually put on a larger aircraft that left the next day, but was anxious the whole time and broke down in tears after finally reuniting with her husband in Chicago. American Airlines later sent a message to Tang explaining the fiasco as a miscommunication, but he's not buying it. He and his wife want a sincere apology from the airline and are hoping other musicians can learn from their misfortune. Air travel isn't what it used to be. Delta is pushing United hard in the bad publicity stakes. So my kid, wait, so my wife, oh, we're going to be in jail and my wife, kids are going to be what? It's a federal offense if you don't abide by it. Ah, another day, another airline controversy. This time it's Delta in the spotlight for kicking passengers off an oversold flight. Only now it's an entire family with young kids getting booted off and threatened with jail if they don't comply. This video was filmed on April 23rd aboard Delta Airlines Flight 2222 from Hawaii to Los Angeles. It was posted to YouTube on Wednesday by dad Brian Shear from Huntington Beach, California. Shear's wife Brittany started filming when airline staff asked the family to give up a seat they had paid for to make space for another passenger. The couple was traveling with two toddlers. The seat was occupied by the couple's two-year-old son. For safety reasons, they planned to strap him into a car seat placed on top of it. But the airline insisted Brian hold the boy in his lap. Because he's two and under. Okay, I got a solution. He can sit in her lap. Okay. okay? And, I, and then we can take off, and then we can put him back in the car seat. That's what the FAA rules are. No, the with, bottom line with is... him being... No, they're not. We, we're pulling him up right now. With him being two, he cannot sit... To make matters worse, airline staff said the child could not occupy a seat during the flight because it was against Federal Aviation Administration rules. Which is horseshit. In fact, the FAA recommends the toddlers sit in government-approved car seats for safety purposes. Er, and so does Delta's own website. Oh, and never mind the kid was in the car seat when the Shears flew out to Hawaii in the first place. The issue that Delta used to trip the family up in the end was that the seat was originally booked in the name of Brian's 18-year-old son. But the teen flew back on an earlier flight so his brother would have a seat. The thinking being that otherwise the kid would not sleep on the five-hour long red eye and it would compromise safety with him crawling all over his parents' laps. But technically, tickets on Delta flights are non-transferable. Eventually, the family accepted that they couldn't win and asked if they could give up the seat and get in the air. Nuh-uh! Have you guys all off the flight? Or we're going to retrain the whole aircraft? And so we're getting kicked off this plane yes. no matter what. Instead, Delta threatened the family with jail if they didn't all get off the flight. They were told that not having anywhere to stay was not Delta's problem, and the family was on their own. So at around midnight, the Shears had to scramble around for a hotel. They then spent around $2,000 on a new flight leaving the next day. And as if things couldn't get any worse, that flight was with United. On Thursday, Delta apologized and said they'd contacted the family to offer them a refund and additional compensation. Guess Delta just wasn't happy with United getting all the limelight. Uh, a round trip ticket for this? A British man who paid more than 1,200 pounds to fly to South Africa with British Airways says he was very unhappy when he was given a damp seat to sit on. Andrew Wilkinson, a 39-year-old IT consultant, boarded a flight from Heathrow to South Africa at the end of July to see his parents. When he arrived at his economy class seat, Wilkinson noticed it was damp, and the staff admitted to him that the witness was, in fact, urine that was left there by a passenger from a previous flight. Yuck! 
And instead of helping Wilkinson clean it up, a flight attendant gave him wet wipes from the lavatory instead, expecting him to take care of it himself. After Wilkinson said he couldn't sit on a wet seat like the one he was given, the attendant laughed and said, I can see you're gonna work me really hard on this flight, aren't you? Not looking for any trouble, Wilkinson ended up putting a plastic bag over the seat and then covering it with a blanket. Ha, <laughs> what an in-flight experience. After complaining about his experience on Twitter, British Airways contacted Wilkinson and offered him 5,000 of their reward points and a flight voucher worth 435 pounds or a free upgrade on his next flight to South Africa. However, Wilkinson said he wasn't concerned about the compensation and he simply wants a proper apology. British Airways told the media that they were very concerned and have apologized to Wilkinson. They also added that the cabin's cleanliness is of utmost importance and they perform frequent spot checks to make sure high standards are met. Pilot blasts AC to clear out passengers. A video showing an airline cabin filling up with mist as passengers vomit has gone viral. The Express reports that their AirAsia flight was flying from Kolkata to a small town in West Bengal when it was delayed for four hours. The captain made an announcement for the passengers to get off the plane, giving no explanation. When the poor passengers refused, as it was raining heavily outside, he decided to retaliate. The pilot reportedly blasted the AC on full, forcing the passengers to deplane. The video shows passengers protesting, screaming loudly, and some even hurling as the mist filled the cabin. Passengers complained, saying it was suffocating and very unprofessional and rude. AirAsia released a statement apologizing for the inconvenience. However, the airline claims that the AC was turned on because of the high humidity conditions. Are the bugs part of the in-flight entertainment? The only thing worse than a long plane ride is a long plane ride with bed bugs, as passengers of multiple flights from New Jersey to India found out. Air India had received complaints about the bugs in business class seats, but apparently ignored them last week. The Hindustan Times reports one man complained that the business class seats he and his family were sitting in during their 17-hour flight from New Jersey to Mumbai were infested with bed bugs. Because of the bed bugs, the family was later moved to economy but had to deal with broken tables and TVs. Another passenger said he could see bed bugs crawling around on the seats. More complaints keep coming as another Air India passenger tweeted that his wife and three kids flew business from Newark to Mumbai and are now suffering bug bites all over their body. Last Thursday, a Mumbai-bound Air India flight was grounded because multiple passengers, including an eight-month-old baby, had allegedly suffered bug bites during the flight. Air India later said the aircrafts in question have been fumigated and seat covers and other hardware have been replaced. Meanwhile, NJ.com reported that the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey said the airline has not received reports of bed bugs in the terminal or other parts of the airport. Man barred from BA flight for excessive layering. A British man attempting to get from Keflavik Airport in Iceland back to England was arrested for trying to board a British Airways plane while wearing a ton of clothes. Ryan Hawaii Williams was at the BA counter trying to get out of paying an additional bag fee, so he did what anyone would do when confronted by a douchey airline. He put everything on. By everything, we mean all the clothes that wouldn't fit in his checked baggage. That's 10 shirts and 8 pairs of pants. And how was Hawaii rewarded for its ingenuity and in out-of-the-luggage thinking? BA denied him a seat and called the cops on him. Then things really got hopping after Popo maced Ryan and introduced him to the ground after he refused to leave. Hawaii tried the next day with EasyJet, which turned out to be not that easy. He finally made it back on a Norwegian airline. BA and EasyJet have reportedly refunded him. Lesson of the day? Airlines suck. Boy with epilepsy forced to leave Emirates flight. Emirates has reportedly forced a teen suffering from epilepsy and his family to leave a flight against their will. Despite the family having shown officials a certificate to prove the boy was clear to fly, The Guardian reports Euronews journalist Isabel Kumar, her 17-year-old son Eli, and the rest of the family last week boarded a flight bound for France from Dubai. Before the trip, Kumar made sure Emirates was aware of Eli's condition and that he needed a vacant seat next to him in case he had a seizure. When Emirates asked to see a medical certificate, Kumar couldn't find it, so she called her doctor to email the certificate. When Eli's doctor wanted to speak to the flight attendants, they refused. 
The flight attendants told them the certificate had to be shown to ground staff, despite the fact that the family had spoken to staff at the check-in and at the departure gate about their son's condition. The attendants then told Kumar and her family that they would need to leave the plane or else they would call the police. Kumar posted a video of Eli, who was becoming anxious under the pressure, biting his arm and holding his head in his hands. After leaving the plane without any further issue, an emergency medical team agreed that Eli was medically cleared to carry on with the trip. Kumar claims the family continued to be treated badly and that the airline didn't do anything to improve their situation. Later, a different Emirates employee suggested that the family fly to Geneva the next day. Kumar said travel is challenging for a child with special needs, especially when the child is being treated unfairly. She added that the incident wouldn't stop them traveling as a family, but they will reconsider before traveling with Emirates in the future. Charity group Epilepsy Action told The Guardian that epileptic episodes can be very distressing and urged travel companies to ensure that their staff are trained to handle such episodes if they arise. An Emirates spokesperson said the airline was very sorry for the distress and inconvenience brought upon Kumar and her family and that they have offered them a complimentary hotel stay while in transit and had rebooked them on another flight. Was the airline wrong to force the family off the flight, or was the staff merely erring on the side of caution? Should the other passengers who sat by silently watching the scene unfold have spoken up? Let us know what your thoughts are below.